Good day. It is November 20th, 2015, Friday, and uh, I think it's been two or three weeks since I last made a vlog. I've just been so busy um, at school. It's unbelievable how much work school's throwing at us now. It's more work than I've ever had to do in my life ever and I know I've said that about school for the past two or three years but it's true because it gets harder every year this week alone I had four or five tests and I must have pulled three or four consecutive all-nighters I up up until Thursday I got so Monday Tuesday Sunday Monday Tuesday and Wednesday I got maybe eight hours of sleep total across those four days that's uh that's how bad it is but uh i'll get some sleep i got some sleep last night i'll get even more sleep tonight and uh things will go all right um only a couple of things to uh talk about tonight first of all um i've been thinking about christmas christmas is coming upon us just a month and five days so uh, that's always exciting and uh i i think i know what i want my uh big gift this Christmas to be and I think I want to get two very big hard drives two hard drives maybe each like something like two terabytes in size and uh, the reason for that is is I have a lot of data that I need to back up the bulk of my data is these videos that I make for YouTube each the average size of a YouTube video I make is about half a gigabyte so uh, that's pretty big and uh, that's even, I just film in standard definition. And uh, I currently still, it's, it's how I've been doing it for over half a decade now, I still back up all of my data, including my YouTube videos, to recordable DVDs. Now that in itself, it, it works just fine, but DVDs are a terrible medium to back up to. First of all, by today's standards, they're very tiny now. Um, they weren't over half a decade ago, but they are now. Second of all is DVDs are quite volatile. Um, uh, generally, they only last a few years before uh, they start to degrade and data begins to get lost. Now luckily, once in a while, I stick in one of my old DVDs, like the first DVD of YouTube videos I ever burned, and they're all still perfectly readable, so that's good. But I want something, first of all, way larger, so I don't have to spend money on tons of DVDs. I have like a hundred of them now. And uh, uh, second of all, I want something that'll probably be more reliable, because more often than not, hard drives, especially drives that aren't used very often, can last decades. So I'd like to do that. I want to get two drives so I can set them up in a mirrored RAID configuration so that they each contain the same data. So if, God forbid, one drive were to ever fail, my data is safe on the other drive until I buy a new drive to replace the failed one. So that's what I want to do. Uh, two drives, uh, two, two ter I'm looking mostly at two terabyte because from what I can tell that two terabyte drives give you the most data per dollar right now. Once you go bigger than that they get really expensive because of course it's harder to, uh, uh, to make drives larger than a terabyte or two. And if I go smaller than that it gets more expensive just because you know general uh, market marketing stuff you can charge more money for something that's smaller. So uh, I'm looking mostly at two terabytes. And uh, two, two, two terabyte drives will cost me, uh, from what I'm looking right now, probably $160, $180. So uh, that'll probably be my big Christmas gift this year. It'll be a very useful one. Um, it'll be good to uh, back up my data. Uh, to something like that, and I'll, I'll quit backing up to DVDs for the most part. So that is that. Um, in other news, this big ugly HP laptop um, that the school was discarding that I got for free, um, Mum brought up her spare AC adapter for her laptop. It does indeed fit, and this laptop works absolutely perfect. So uh, I have a video on that, which will come on the main channel sometime. Now, today's, uh, the, the main feature of today's video is, uh, I've, you know, all of, I have many interests. They're all centered around, mostly around electronics and electrical things. 
but uh, I have many interests inside there. And uh, they all come in waves I've found. In the past few years, excuse me, i found that um, all my interests, you know, they literally come in waves of waves with a period of maybe a year or two. And uh, meaning that, you know, there will be times when I get really interested in a certain hobby or whatever, and then it'll die out for a while, and then in a year or two I'll become interested in it again. Well, that's happening. Uh, another interest, uh, one interest of mine that I haven't really uh, talked about or uh, have had any interest in for a couple of years is coming back on the upswing, and that is uh, CB radio and radio communications in general. I've been really looking at that. Um, a good friend of mine at school, uh, he likes talking on CB radio. He actually has one in his truck. And uh, for many months now, we've been planning on, you know, if I can get one of my CB radios up here, uh, we can uh, see if we can talk to each other. He lives less than a kilometer away, so it's very likely that we could. But I just haven't done that yet. But uh, now I'm actually becoming interested in CB radio again, and I've been, you know, I've been wanting to buy a vintage handheld CB radio, and I've been looking on eBay, but I haven't really found anything, and uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, yeah, it's something I've become a bit interested in again. But uh, now, in the past few weeks, I've kind of put that aside because I have now regained an interest in amateur radio. And if you don't know what amateur radio is, uh, amateur radio defines a set of uh, a, a a set of ranges of radio frequencies in the radio spectrum that uh, license that people with amateur radio licenses can use for pretty much whatever they want. The amateur radio bands are mostly used for voice, so you know, just regular, just kind of like regular radio. Uh, some people use the amateur bands to send uh, images from one radio to another. They use a computer to modulate an image, and then the computer at the receiving end takes the scrambled audio that contains the information to make up that image, demodulates it, and displays the image. It's kind of cool. That's called sl uh, SSTV, slow scan television. And then some other people use the amateur radio bands to control uh, remote controlled stuff and stuff like that, but it's used mostly for actual voice communications and Morse code too. And uh, uh, you need to be licensed to broadcast on amateur radio, and uh, it's quite a popular hobby, um, uh, even among many young people still. It's a very old hobby. Um, the majority of amateur radio users now are uh, older. Uh, people, but uh, it's still quite hop uh, popular among my generation. And uh, ever since I was a kid, for years and years now, probably almost 10 years, I've been wanting to get my amateur radio license. But uh, uh, the last time I really had an interest in getting my license was about three years ago, and I tried an online exam, and I failed it pretty much consistently. Now, uh, there are many amateur radio study guides that uh, you can read to study for the exam and you can learn that ma the material that way and do the exam. I mean children uh, get their amateur radio licenses. You just gotta study the material. Well, you know, me especially being in university, I really just had no uh, I had no interest in spending the time and energy to do that so I just never did it. Well recently um, I've regained an interest in amateur radio and I tried the online exam again, and now I'm consistently passing it. In fact, not only passing it, I'm passing it with honors. And in Canada, when you get your license, if you pass with honors, which is 80% or better, you get a couple of extra privileges um, in addition to what you'd get by just passing. And, uh, yeah, it turns out that uh, uh, learn, uh, being an electrical engineering student uh, teaches you most of what you need to know to get your amateur radio license. Um, the exam, which is hosted by Industry Canada, and it's just like the real exam that you'd get, same questions, that questions come from the same question bank as on the real exam. Um, the three quarters, no, maybe not three quarters, but about half the material is basic electrical and electronics theory. A quarter of it's common sense, and then the other quarter 
quarter is actual technical radio stuff. So yeah, once you become an electrical engineer, you've learned most of what you need to get your amateur radio license, in Canada at least, and that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I'm consistently passing the test now with honors, and uh, I really, really want to get my license. And uh, it turns out that not one, but two of my professors are accredited examiners. They are accredited by Industry Canada, and they can give out amateur radio exams. So I spoke to, to them. I spoke to one, and he directed me to the other, and I spoke to the other one. And unfortunately, uh, uh, an, an amateur radio examination isn't something that can be uh, just held on, just uh, uh, scheduled whenever. Um, they're only held at certain times whenever the examiners decide they want them to be held. And so the next one won't be held until January, so I'll have to wait till then to get my license, which sucks, because if I could get it now, I'd totally do that, and then I'd say screw the hard drives, I'd get a VHF UHF transceiver for Christmas. But, uh, oh well, I'll wait until January and uh, get it then. But yeah, I've been really interested, and uh, the school has its own amateur radio station. The call sign is VE9UNB. Um, if anyone out there uh, is a uh, uh, an amateur radio user and you ever want to try and reach us on uh, on HF, um, VE9 Uniform November Bravo, and uh, you uh, so yeah, we have our own station with a lot of equipment, uh, HF transceiver, VHF UHF transceiver, and we have a, U, a, v, a dual band VHF UHF handheld as well, and. Uh, we act, the school actually has an amateur radio club which students can join and you don't need to be licensed. So uh, um, after speaking to my professor about the examination, he encouraged me to join the club and I did. Uh, you don't have to be licensed to join the club, but you still can't transmit. You can only receive uh, until you get your license. But uh, yeah, I have since joined uh, UMB's amateur radio club which is totally awesome and it also gets me access to the station which is housed in a little tiny room in the top floor of uh, the building and uh... yeah i visited there a couple of times and it's it's really cool it's a, the room's just full of history and of course there's really cool radio equipment in there too and i can listen on the hf unit and i hear people from all over the world and if i had my license i'd be able to talk to them too and uh, yeah, it's a really cool room, and I have filmed uh, a video of that room showing all the cool equipment that, that's in there, and I will upload that video on the main channel, hopefully soon. So uh, yeah, there you go, amateur radio. Hope I can get my license in January, and I think if I do, I think it'll be a very rewarding uh, hobby. I think it's something that I could get into for uh, uh, permanently. So there you go guys, that's all I wanted to talk about uh, in this vlog, and uh, thanks for watching and uh, listening, and uh, I will see you guys later.